Hey everybody. So I just wanted to build upon a story I was doing on one of the religious organizations out here in Canby. Canby, Oregon. So I showed you guys a spot out there in um, near, well, it was near Donald, Oregon is where I showed you guys that report from that was at night. And I'm trying to be a little bit low key here today, although it doesn't really do any good. This place feels a lot like Tule Lake. If you ever go out to Tule Lake, it feels the same way. It's all quiet, like there's nobody there, but you know, like somewhere underneath, there's like a thousand people. <laughs> you can feel the energy. It's not above ground, it's below. So this basically is the religious center of La Luz del Mundo and some of the affiliated housing. And it takes up like a big chunk of the downtown of Canby. It's pretty significant. It's almost like the like the traditional Spanish things that you know used to see, but none of the architecture is that way. You know, like I'm seeing like the churches like that were Catholic, how they'd have like a facility and pueblos and things like that. But here's the main area. And that's the main sign of the church. And as you can see, that's the logo right there. All right, now, one of the reasons why I'm highlighting this is because um, can be is in proximity to a whole bunch of these mini airports and they're in Aurora so when you go way south of Portland I don't know about 20 miles or so not even that far it's not even that far south of Portland you get to Aurora and that's where there's a whole bunch of like helipads mini airports Elite people flying in and out on jets to this area. And if you drive around the rest of Canby, I mean, it's pretty humble. Out of all the places in the county, I would say they do a good job at things, guys, but they also have like, you know, quite a bit of the roads need repaired because, you know, you just don't have the same tax base, but they do a good job. So I'm not being critical. What I'm saying though is, is that, um, it wouldn't be like a location you would expect a lot of people to be flying into in and out of right that have those kind of like that kind of money but they do probably because not they're coming to canby but they're going to be going to places you know surrounding it and that's why i wanted to kind of highlight what this all really represents because when it comes to the as above so below economy of what goes on with underground uranium you guys must know all those people that flying out of those airports they have staff and they have people that need to hole out the underground caverns and need to like um, do the electrical, the plumbing, um, maintain things, and then, you know, hang out, help out, maintain whatever. And increasingly, they have to find a way to create mirrors of what happens underneath in that economy to what happens above. If you spend a lot of time above and you have money that's trackable, how do you explain the money you make working in things below? Well, Folks, I think we all know increasingly that there's not too many people that are legitimately into religious things anymore the way that they used to be as far as organized things. Um, we mean to say that nonprofits have kind of become a joke. And I'm not saying that this one is. Well, look, I'm not saying it isn't either. <laughs> I'm just saying that in general, the nonprofit system is kind of a joke and not a lot of churches really honor what it's about. Increasingly, they pretend to be a church to be something else and so what i'm asking folks to do when it's into this one in particular is just to look into some of those charges that were leveled against the guy who alleges to be the apostle of this church um and uh if you ask all the people in the church they say they don't believe it and they say that uh they don't think that he did it um the church they basically involved the coercion of uh, sex from underage girls and he had, I guess, some other partner in Southern California. The charges extended over years and he was convicted for it. And the folks that are part of the church have said they don't believe it for the most part. And, you know, 
it's an incredibly wealthy church folks and it just makes you wonder like they claim he claims to be an apostle of jesus christ but you don't see a cross anywhere here guys and i don't have any skin in that game in the classic sense i have opinions on it but i'm not like the kind of person that comes from like a deep catholic or lutheran or some kind of that kind of background where i have assessments at that level but it just makes me wonder is there a connection between these sort of non-denominational churches that don't really seem like they're doing church things it seems more like it's about some other economy and uh, there's other ones too folks i don't want to mean to, to pick on this one but this one had that public case that was pretty well known about it so i thought it was relevant for us to discuss in the context of it being in this small town that's really close to a whole bunch of elite miniature airports and helipads you know i mean guys let's be real here you know mina arkansas right what was that about little tiny airports people bringing cocaine in and out so when you think about where all the underground economies lead back to how they hide the money when they make something that's more gray market or gray or whatever maybe that's it and you know how do we solve this problem how do we keep this from happening where people are um i don't necessarily have a problem with what people do in a classic sense guys it's just that the, the creative means through which people do to hide money anymore like there's all these ancillary victims of it that shouldn't be and uh, i'll get into that topic in another time or whatever but um i just wanted to talk a little bit more about that church and show you something from here in canby oregon today thank you for watching